my friends, I have another folk tale for you today. This one is from India, and it's an example of a chain tale, or a tale that is linked together, a story that is linked together, like a chain would be linked together. I hope that you enjoy this awesome story called A Drum. There once was a poor widow who had only one child, a son. He was a kind-hearted boy, always willing to help out in any way he could. Theirs was not an easy life, but the boy rarely complained. As long as he and his mother had each other, the boy didn't mind that his clothing was ragged or that he only had a few toys. The boy had been secretly wishing for something, however. He had always wanted a drum. One day, when his mother was going to the village to sell some of their grain, she asked, Is there anything you would like from the market? The boy hesitated and then said, All I would really like, mother, is a drum. I know you won't be able to get me one, but that is what I would like. The boy was right. His mother knew that she would never be able to buy a drum. The grain they grew and harvested to sell usually only gave her enough rupees or Indian coins to buy the few things she and her son could not grow or make themselves. The poor woman thought of her son all the way home from the market, saddened that she was not able to get him the one thing that he wanted. She bent down to pick up a piece of wood. Perhaps my good son can find a use for this. It's not much, but at least it's something. The boy didn't know what to do with the wood when his mother gave it to him, but he thanked her and carried it with him when he went out to play. Down the road, the boy could see an old woman kneeling beside a cook stove. The woman was trying to light the dried cow dung she used for fuel, but the fire wasn't catching and great billows of smoke hung all around her. Her eyes were watering and the boy asked her why she was crying. I, I can't get my fire to burn, she replied. Here, said the boy, handing her his piece of wood. Perhaps this will help. In no time at all, the old woman was able to get the fire going. She thanked the boy, giving him a chapati, a round, flat bread that she cooked in a pan on the stove. The boy took the bread and walked on until he met another woman, this one the wife of the village potter. She held a small child in her arms, but the child was crying so loudly and could not be quieted. The boy spoke loudly so that he could be heard. Why is your child crying? He asked. The potter's wife answered, because he is hungry. We have nothing for him to eat. The boy looked at the chapati he was holding in his hand and then offered it to the unhappy child. The child nibbled at the bread and stopped crying at once. By way of thanks, the grateful mother gave the boy a large pot. The boy hadn't gone far when he came to the river where he found a man and woman arguing. What is the trouble? asked the boy. I am a washerman, the man replied, and my wife has just broken the only pot I had to boil clothes in. I'll never get the clothing clean now. The boy realized that he had a problem, a solution to this man's problem too, and gave the couple the pot he was carrying. Thank you very much, the washerman said, and he gave the boy a coat for his kindness. The boy walked on further until he came to a man leading a horse along the road. The man wore sandals on his feet, but was dressed in little more than his underclothes. His hair was wet and he was shivering. The boy approached the man and asked, what happened to your clothes and why are you all wet? I was on my way to visit relatives when a robber galloped up on his horse. He demanded I give him my clothes and then he pushed me into the river. The boy handed the man the coat he'd been given by the washerman. Here, he said, put this on. The man slipped on the garment. Please take the horse they left, he told the boy. The robber left it and I have no need for it. So the boy took the horse and before long, he came upon a wedding party. The bridegroom and his family, plus several musicians with their instruments. They were all seated beneath the shade of a small tree, looking not the least bit happy. Why do you all look so glum? The boy asked. The father of the bridegroom spoke up. We are waiting for the man who is bringing the horse that we will ride, but we don't know what happened to this man, and if he doesn't arrive soon, we shall be late for the wedding. It was the custom for the bridegroom to come to the wedding on a horse. The boy listened to this story, then offered the bridegroom his horse. 
You have saved the day, the groom exclaimed, turning to speak with his father and to one of the musicians. The groom handed the boy, what do you think it is? A drum. Please accept one of our drums with all of our thanks. The boy's face lit up with joy. Oh, thank you, he cried. I've always wanted a drum. Thank you very much and, and much happiness on your wedding day. The boy ran all the way home as fast as his feet would take him. His astonished mother stared at the drum in disbelief as her son told her the entire story of how he had come to own it, starting with the piece of wood that she had picked up along the side of the road. They are there. We are here. The end. So a couple of things I want to talk to you about that. One, there's something I think that each of us really, really wants. And maybe there's a reason that we can't have it. Maybe it's because our parents say, you know, you're not old enough for that yet. Maybe it's because it's something that's very expensive and we have to save our money for that. Um, there's a lot of, of things that we might want. Think about what it is that you want that maybe you've been told that you can't have or maybe you just know that you can't have yet. Maybe something that you're saving up for or waiting until the right time, until the right age or to your birthday. I would love to hear what that is and, and have you share that with me, please, after this story on, um, on the Teens app so that I can see what it is that you are hoping for. And the other thing I want you to think about is how can you get that? What can you do to accomplish that goal. It's something that you really want. And if it's just that you have to be 12 years old or something and you have to wait for it, well, there's not much you can do to hurry yourself along, right? But if it's something you need to save up for or something that you don't know how to get um, just because you don't know where it is or because you know Amazon is really behind on sending us things or whatever the reason, okay? So think about that. What can you do? How can you own that, okay? And at the end of the story, you might have noticed that I said, they are there and we are here. In India, storytellers use that as a way to tell their audience that that's the end of the story. Much like we're used to hearing once upon a time at the beginning of a story so that we know when it starts. Storytellers in India say, they are there, referring to the characters in the story, and we are here referring to the audience so that you have that separation between what's happening in the story and what's happening in real life and we are here. So I want you to think about if you were writing a story or telling a story, how would you start it to let people know that you are beginning your story and how would you end it to let people know that the story is over? You heard me say after I said they are there, we are here, I said the end, right? To let you know that the story was finished. Um, I did not share with you the first picture of this story or the only picture of this story because I didn't want you to see that he in fact does get his drum at the end. So well, let me flip it around so you can see it. There you go. There he is playing his drum. So the other thing I would love for you to do, and this is really for my little bit older students, so um, and, and really anybody can do this. Um, my younger ones love to act things out as well. I want you to choose one of the interactions that the boy has. So it could be the boy and his mother. It could be the boy and the, um, the lady who is trying to cook and doesn't have any, any wood for her fire. Um, it could be the boy and the mother and the little child who is hungry, who he gives the, the food to. It could be the boy and the bridegroom and the wedding party and the musicians at the end. It could be the man who is wet, who he gives the coat to. It could be the washerman and his wife and the boy. Whatever interactions, or even just the washerman and his wife and their argument about her breaking the pot, he could do kind of a, a preview, what happened before the story happened, right? Like the moment before, my older students will have heard that, the moment before is what happens to the characters right before for what we see or what we hear about. So I would love to see a little brief video of you acting out part of this story. And if you don't want to do a video or don't have anybody to take the video or don't have any way to send it to me, that is fine and dandy. Then just do that. Maybe you have a sibling at home. Maybe you can do it with one of your parents who is um, 
who, who will do, right? Some parents are a little more shy about play acting, but I would love to see some of your um, versions of the moments in the drum. Remember, this is an Indian story, and it actually is um, from the New Delhi area. So I'm not sure if if that's really where it's from, but remember folk tales are tales that have been told and told and told. It is an example of a chain story. So one thing happened that led to the next thing happened, that led to the next thing happening. So you could see it like links on a chain. Uh, if you wanted to do a craft project associated with this story, it would be great to see you make some kind of a chain. You can make a paper chain, and on each of those chains you might put a word or a sentence that can lead into the next. Perhaps you want to write your own chain story, and you can do that by using paper links, or if you happen to have, um, we used to have baby toys all over the house, but we've gotten rid of them since Nate is 11 now, right? But some people have those little um, plastic links you could link those together and tell perhaps your parents part of a story and use each of the links as part of your chain in your chain story. Um, there is now a garbage truck coming behind me, so I'm going to sign off. I hope that you enjoyed the drum. It is a beautiful Indian story, and I hope that we could be so kind that we would help everybody that we see along the way. All right, I'll talk to y'all soon.